What's up, YouTube? So in this video, I just want to kind of go over what I'm looking forward to seeing in the Miami Dolphins 2022 uh, training camp um, before we really get into it because it started today. Um, so one of the main things is that quarterback, I want to see how Tua has improved. I want to see him being a little bit more decisive. I want to see his pre- and post-snap reads being more efficient. Um, I already know he can throw the deep ball. I'm not really concerned about that. Um, I know a lot of fans are a little bit more nervous about that than I am. So my thing is his pre- and post-snap reads. Um, Teddy Bridgewater, I'm not really concerned about. Skylar Thompson, I want to see him hopefully develop so he can possibly be our number two next year. That'd be nice to have a cheap backup who's reliable. Uh, after that at running back, uh, I'm pretty sure our top three guys are going to be Chase Edmonds, Sonny Michelle and Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert has been medically cleared, which is great. Um, after that, I, I assume we'll probably carry at least four running backs on the active roster because we're planning on running the ball a lot and doing running back by committee things. Um, so, obviously, the battle for who's going to get that fourth spot between uh, Savon Ahmed, Jared Dokes, uh, or Garrett Dokes, actually, uh, Miles Gaskin, and Zaquandre White, I think that's going to be one hell of a fight. Uh, and then also, if White or Dokes doesn't win it, which one of them two ends up on the practice squad? Uh, because I think that Miles Gaskin or Ahmed, and it, it, you can't put them on the practice squad because someone will pick them up right now. Um, so, that is what that is. Uh, and also, if you want to count Lynn Bowden, Lynn, eh, Lynn Bowden, but I'll talk about him in a minute. Um, fullback. Hopefully we have. Hopefully we'll be able to see Alec uh, Ingold get back in there. He is still on an injury, so right now John Lovett is our fullback. Uh, hopefully Alec can get back healthy soon and just outright beat out John because I think he's a better fullback than John Lovett is. So, um, so at receiver, obviously our four receivers that are untouchable is Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, Cedric Wilson, and um, Eric Uzukanma. I. I I'll get how to say his last name during the season when I hear it more. Um, but that is what that is. After that, it, it kind of comes down to how many receivers we're going to keep. Five, six, whatever. Um, I think Trent Sherfield will probably end up being on the active roster just because he is a good player and he is from the Niners, so he knows Mike McDaniel pretty well. Um, so that's going to be a thing to look for. But we also have um, you know, Cody Core. We have River, we have Devontae Deadman, we have Braylon Sanders, and Preston Williams. So we got plenty of receivers to fight for uh, practice squad or even a sixth receiver spot. And like I said, we do have Lynn Bowden who can play wide receiver and running back for you. And can, you can even do some like wildcat quarterback things with him because uh, he was a quarterback in college. Um, I personally like the idea of keeping five receivers and then Lynn Bowden as that sixth guy who's also technically a fifth running back. I kind of like that idea. Um, but that's just me. But we'll have to see how, how that kind of works out. Uh, I don't think you can put Preston on the practice squad. I think he gets signed. So we might just have to cut him. Uh, but maybe like Devontae Deadman or Cody Core or something. We, we'll, we'll probably have at least two. Um, on the practice squad. So th that'll be interesting. Um, then at tight end, <clears throat> I assume we'll probably keep three. Uh, Mike Kosicki and Hunter Long, I think, are on this team regardless. Mike Kosicki is too big of a weapon to just outright cut right now, even if we do only have one on one year deal. And Hunter Long is the only one that we really have any uh, longevity with. Uh, we, we have him for, like, what, three more years? Yeah, because he was drafted last year. Um, after that, we have Stephen Carter, uh, Stephen Carter, and then Tanner Connor, um, Adam Shaheen, Durham, and Durham Smythe. So I think everybody else is fighting for that last spot, and I think it's really between Adam Shaheen and Durham Smythe. And I think it's an interesting battle because I think Adam Shaheen is our best blocking tight end on the team, but I think Durham Smythe is a solid blocker too, but I think he adds a little bit more in the receiving game. But Adam Shaheen is a reliable receiver. But I think Durham um, gives you a little bit of ability to get some like big man yak. Like He's pretty good at running people over. So that's interesting. 
Um, and then on the offensive line, we have all kinds of question marks. The big thing there is I want to see technique. That's been what Mike McDaniel has been talking about a lot is like hand position and footwork, which is what I've been bounding, what I've been slamming the table for this whole time. Uh, but also we have to see where people are lining up too. Um, we know that Teron Armstead is going to be playing left tackle whenever he comes back off injury. But after that, we have no clue. Uh, Liam Eichenberg and Austin Jackson are both working out at left guard and right tackle. Uh, Connor Williams is playing left guard and center. And Robert Hunt is playing right guard and right tackle. Which is good in the regular season. Um, because, you know, if injuries happen, we can shift people and they have practiced at different positions. And Michael Dieter, at some point in his career, has played tackle, guard, and center. Especially if you count college. So, <laughs> that's that's very interesting where people are going to end up lining up. Um, and who even ends up starting. Because if Connor Williams goes to guard, then Liam and Austin are going to have to fight for that right tackle spot. And Michael Dieter is going to have to start at center. Uh, if Connor Williams is starting at center, then Liam Eichenberg and Austin Jackson are going to have to fight for, gu- for left guard and right tackle. <laughs> it, it's a mess. Uh... And then if Robert Hunt starts at right tackle, then we have a whole other issue with right guard. Which I don't really... I kind of want to just keep Hunt at guard. He's good there. I don't want to mess that up. Don't touch it. That's me. Then after that, you have to figure out who your backups are going to be. Uh, I like Lornell Coleman. Michael Dieter, I think, has to be here because he's our only true center who has started NFL regular season games at center. So I think he has to stay. And I'd like to keep Robert Jones and Solomon Kinley as well. I'd like to also keep uh, Kellen Dyche as well and Blaze Andres. I'd like to... Andreas, sorry. Uh, I'd like to keep both of them. Greg Little, I would just cut. So that that's that's going to be an interesting fight, is who our backups are going to be and who's going to be on the practice squad. Uh, Cole Banwart can probably go on the practice squad if need be. Um, Adam Pankey, I would outright cut. Keon Smith can probably go on the practice squad too. Um, defensively, um, I want to see what Channing Tindall is going to do, uh, to see if he, if his mental processing is up to snuff because he hasn't had a whole lot of playing time at Georgia, um, but he's definitely got the athleticism to be a very good player. So I want to see how that kind of, uh, develops, uh, past that. I want to see what we're doing with Cameron Good because he's a guy who can play uh, linebacker and edge, kind of like an Andrew Van Ginkle. I think they're kind of similar in that way. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what we do with him. Um, past that, I mean, the, the DBs, I don't really care. I, I'd like to see Noah Igbenogany take a jump, uh, but he's just going to be a straight-up backup because Xavier Howard and Byron Jones, Byron Jones um, is, still hurt, is still hurt, unfortunately. But um, that is what that is. <clears throat> but but Xavier Howard and Byron Jones are our number one and two corner. And Nick Needham is still our uh, nickel. So Noah is just a straight-up backup. Um, he'll, he might come in as like a dime type thing if we need him to. Um, but we also have Brandon Jones and Javon Holland, obviously, as our strong and free safety. Eric Rowe is like a backup. And then if we want to do like three safety looks, we can bring Eric Rowe in. Uh, past that, seeing who comes out as our backup free safety. Because like I said, Brandon Jones and Javon Holland are our starting safeties. And we have Eric Rowe, who's good at both positions. Um, but after that, we've got Trill Williams, we have Clayton, we have Shedrick Redwine, and we have Verone uh, McKinley to fight for that uh, last backup safety spot. Um, Clayton is pretty good at... Uh, special teams, so that does give him an edge, so he might remain on the team. We might even end up keeping uh, five total safeties, which wouldn't upset me. Um, And the last real thing to look for, actually two things, Um, hopefully Jason Sanders is looking a little bit better, Um, and I think that's going to come down to who our punters are, because I think because Jason Sanders has been pretty good for the Miami Dolphins throughout most of his career, but he took a step back last year. And I don't think that that is a coincidence. I think with Matt Hawk being gone, um, and then all of a sudden, 
Jason Sanders can't kick consistently anymore. I think that, like, we still had the same kicker. We still had Blake Ferguson as our long snapper. So the only new thing was our punter and holder. So I'm hoping that with either Thomas Morstead or Tommy Heatherly being the holder, uh, Jason Sanders can get back to where he should be. <clears throat> but also kickers are weird, so we'll see. Um, and then also the straight-up punting battle between Thomas Morstead and Tommy Heatherly. I'm hoping that Tommy Heatherly proves to be a really good punter and beats out Thomas Morstead because um, then we have a cheap punter for, ne- for the next three years who hopefully will be pretty good. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, I want to see some more, some different people do some return stuff. I don't really like Jalen Waddle or Tyree Kill doing it very often. If you want to let them do it in like clutch situations, um, sorry about background noise, but if you want to let them do it in clutch situations, do that. I don't really want Javon Holland doing it either, just because I don't want to risk injury. But people like Noah Igbenogany, uh, maybe Lynn Bowden, I think they can do it. Uh... Ahmed, because that might help him potentially make the team if anything is going to. Uh, People like that. So, yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you'd like to appreciate hitting that like button, have any questions or comments in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.